Welcome to the channel Trim It Color. In this session we are going to model a tree and some stones. We are on the process of making this scene. In the last video we have modeled the hut. Today I am going to model this tree and these stones. Let's directly jump into Maya. So this is the model we have done in our last video. I will click off this layer and also I will create a new layer for this base. Just rename it as base and select the object, add selected object and click it off. Alright, so we'll start with a clean scene. First of all, I am planning to make the stone and then I am going to create the tree. So I am taking a cube in the scene for the blocking of this stone. So going to mesh and directly smooth it. Now selecting the vertex, pressing B for the soft modification and by holding B and middle mouse drag you can see you can increase or decrease the radius and I am just pulling it up. Creating an edge loop in that area and by selecting the edges I'll just pull it outside to give it a shape and you can see just by selecting the edges and changing the shape and now by selecting the vertices I'm trying to give it a shape of the stone. Stone shape has to be very random. I'm trying to do that only. So inserting one more edge loop. Make sure insert with edge flow option is on. Now I will make all the edges uneven. So for that selecting one edge going to edit mesh and spin edge forward or spin edge backward any one you can use and for that i am using a shortcut Control alt and right arrow or left arrow you can see how i am spinning the edges a few more modifications by selecting the vertices Inserting another edge loop wherever I'm thinking to distort that particular area a little bit. I'm inserting edge loop just to get more vertices. You can see how by spinning the edges I'm changing the direction of the topology and making the shape random so like this i will keep going spinning the edges and modifying the geometry by selecting the vertices until unless i am getting an interesting shape Stone should have so many hard edges. To do that, I am selecting all the edges and going to edit mesh and bevel, giving two segments and a relative fraction. Alright, you can see after pressing 3, we are getting the hard edges. Alright, now clicking on the base and also the hut and placing the stone approximately somewhere over here all right now my plan is to replicate this stone i told you previously before replicating anything you should unwrap it so going to the uv and uv editor select tools and clicking on the uv tools so first of all selecting the object going to create and planner mapping now i am trying to select the faces of the base 
to make it a different UV shell. For that, I am going to create and planar mapping once again. And now you can see it is a different UV shell. This is of red color, means the UVs are reversed. So I am going to the transform and just clicking on flip. For the upper part, I am thinking of giving cylindrical mapping. So selecting all the faces of the upper part, going to create and cylindrical mapping and you just have to complete the circle all right and you can see these white lines are actually the seam so i need to make it regular so going to cut and cut you can see i have created a straight line seam and now selecting these open edges Go to save to save it. I think in this area some edges are left to save. All right, everything is looking fine over here. The seams are clean. Now selecting all the UVs in this UV shell and going to unfold and click on unfold. And you can see we are getting approximately even checker boxes only the scaling of the bottom shell is not correct so selecting the shell i am reducing the size so that the checker boxes can be even with that uv shell all right now i am selecting one side of the edges and stitch together so now you can see the entire stone is having only one uv shell so this is looking fine to me and I'm selecting all the UVs and going to layout and clicking on layout. So you can see the UV shell is inside the positive space. All right, now clicking on the windows and we'll start making the tree stem. For that, I'm going to do the block in with a cylinder. So going to create and taking a cylinder. All right, scale it up. From this stage only, I'm trying to measure the size or the radius of the stem. So, decreasing the subdivision level up to 12 and isolate the object. Selecting all the bottom faces, control select the upper faces and delete. And going to the top faces and selecting alternate edges and delete just to make those quads. Fine. Now going to create curb tool and taking an EP curb tool and drawing an EP curb. Now in this stage I am trying to design the stem. So the stem will go along this curve. So whatever the design of this curve will be the stem will take this shape so this is very very crucial this is the designing part coming to the front view and taking the ep tool once again and creating another branch once again adjusting the vertices i guess you are getting the idea of what i am trying to do and along those curves, I am going to create the stem. So, selecting the top faces of the cylinder and shift selecting the curve and extrude it, increasing the subdivisions. Now, going to the input node of the extrude and decreasing the tapering value to 0 0.03 maybe, 
and I feel this is looking fine. Now go to edit, delete by type history. So there will be no connection between the curve and the surface. Same thing I am going to do for this branch and for that I am making room by giving more edge loops. Now selecting these four faces, going to edit mesh and clicking on circularize you can see the four faces are converted into a circle. Now once again selecting the faces and the curve and extrude. Same thing, increasing the division and going to the extrude input node and taper and making it as if you can remember 0 0.003. 0 0.03 I guess in this case also. Alright, a little bit adjustment by selecting the edges and I'm just sliding it and trying to give it a shape. Now coming to the front view and planning to make more branches and taking the EP curve tool and as you can see I am drawing more branch and once again by selecting the vertices and giving it a shape. For this also it is very important to sketch in the beginning then you don't have to go through the trial and error process because you know how many branches you are going to make and how the design will be and you don't have to think too much while modeling. Once again making room for the extrusion so giving more edge loops by insert edge loop 2 and selecting four faces in this area going to edit mesh and circularize all right i think it should be a little smaller selecting those four faces and the curve and extrude increasing the subdivisions once again going to the inputs and taper if you can remember 0 0.03 all right this is looking fine I have to do a little adjustment in the adjoining areas. The curve is still connected with the geometry. So if I change the position of the curve, automatically the shape will be deformed. Modifying the shape a little bit by sliding the edges. And for this I am using slide edge loop tool. You can get it under mesh tool options. There I have created some shortcuts of the tools. Some more modifications by inserting edge loops through insert edge loop tool. Okay, this is fine to me. So like this. By creating EP curves and extruding from the same geometry, I am going to create many more branches like this and I will make this portion a little bit fast forward because this will be a repetition only of the process. Once again, I am explaining the process, what exactly I am doing over here. That first, I am drawing the EP curve. It doesn't matter if you are using CV curve also or any kind of curve you are using to draw the branch. It doesn't really matter. So you are creating the curve first and then making room from where you are going to extrude. So you need four faces for that. And selecting those four faces, you are going to edit mesh and clicking on circularize. So the portion will be a circle. Select those four faces and shift select the curve and extrude. After extruding, you need to 
increase the divisions and the division can be any random number the entire tree should look very equalized in topology so you need to decide what will be the interval of that number okay and after that you have to go to the input node of that extrusion over there the tapering option you need to change to maybe in this case in this scene it is 0 0.03 it is not a hard and fast number but scene wise it will change i should say okay so this is the process so like this i am making so many branches Once again, I am repeating my suggestion that before modeling, either you should have a reference image, good reference image, or you should have a reference sketch done by yourself. Then your understanding will be much, much better. You will not be lost while modeling. Okay? Here is another suggestion, after creating the curve, by default, the pivot point will come at the center point of the grid. Most of the time, we don't want that. So by selecting the curve, go to modify and click on center pivot. So the pivot point will be shifted to the center of the curve. Then that is going to help you in terms of placing the curve wherever you want. You can see I am repeating the same process again and again. So I feel almost I got my main branches and now I am coming to the base of the stem and let's modify it a little bit. By selecting the faces once again I am using soft modification tool as I told by holding B, I am increasing the radius and let's modify the shape a little bit. In my sketch it is little inclined towards the front, so I am trying to get that shape. Selecting the bottom edges and scaling it down in the Y axis and let's increase the overall scaling and keeping it on the plane. Still some modification at the base until unless I am quite satisfied with the shape and proportion. Ok, so now let's make some roots. So like the branches only, I am selecting 4 faces, going to edit mesh, circularize. Coming to the side view and creating an EP curve like the branches. need to adjust the shape and also the position a little bit now the same process selecting all the four faces and the curve and extrude increasing the subdivisions and going to the inputs and tapering just reducing it a little bit in this case maybe I am keeping 0.2 and this is fine for now 
Later on, I'll come back to this area and we'll change a little bit. By selecting the vertex of the curve, I can modify it. Alright, now selecting the edges and just sliding it to give it a very nice sliding shape. So now let's make another root, selecting four faces and I'm extruding it, just making room for the root. Going to edit mesh and circularize. And in this case also, I am creating an EP curve. Let's modify a little bit. Alright. selecting the faces and shift select the curve and extrude again increasing the divisions going to the inputs tapering let's make it point 0.1 or 2 all right this is looking fine i'm going to do this for all the roots the same thing and over here i am changing the base a little bit so that all the roots can fit on the ground, on the base. Now coming to the back side and we will make room for the new roots. And for that I am giving one edge loop in this area. And now let's select these two faces and go to edit mesh and circularize. Same thing I am going to do with these two faces. I'm going to the side view and creating a curve for the roots. The same process I did for the other roots. Let's position it and rotating it a little bit. Alright. And now modifying it. By selecting the vertices, selecting the faces, shift select the curve and extrude. The same process what we did previously. Now by selecting the vertices, I am changing the shape a little bit. Once again by selecting the edges, I am sliding it and trying to create a continuous edges. Here in this area, I also inserted some edge loops just to equalize the topology. Still modifying the shape by selecting the loops. And I think this is looking fine now. And let's move forward and make another root. I am doing the same thing again and again and for this root also first I am creating a curve and then I need to adjust it according to my design and then by selecting the faces and selecting the curve I need to extrude it and that's all. This is looking absolutely fine. Now let's click on the stone. I'm adjusting the position and scaling and we'll replicate it. You can see how I'm duplicating the stone and placing it in different different areas, changing the orientation and changing the scaling trying to create a very harmonious composition.
All right. Now coming back to the stem once again. I am inserting some edge loops just to equalize the topology because I am planning for another branch in that particular area. So selecting these faces and edit mesh, circularize and I am extruding it. All right. Rotating it a little bit. Fine. Extruding once again in the local axis and circularize it. Extruding once again and pushing it inside. Now I need to modify the edges to give it a correct shape. Inserting an edge loop in this area to give it a better volume. Now let's create some subroutes. So I'm going to use the same process I did previously. So select four faces, circularize it and position it properly and create a curve, select the faces, shift select the curve and extrude it, modify. So this will be the process. Again this is a repetition so I'll make it fast forward. After the extrusion, I am taking care of the topology and making sure that the roots are properly aligned on the plane. Alright, so this is the tree stem. I am creating a new layer for it and naming it as tree. Select the tree, right click and add selected object. Alright, so I am selecting all the stones also and keeping in the stone layer. I will also duplicate once again and will arrange in this side. Maybe we'll duplicate once again. And this should be very small. So after a big rock, I'm keeping a very small stone.
All right, so this much is for today. And in my later videos, I will show you how to create these leaves. In the next video, I am going to unwrap all these models and then going to sculpt all these models in ZBrush. And then we'll do the texturing in Substance Painter and we'll come back to Maya with all the maps and we'll render all the maps in Maya for the final output. All the links are given below. If you want to directly jump to any of those lessons, please go through the links. Hope you enjoyed today's session and don't forget to subscribe to know about the future videos. And thank you so much for watching.